L A D. Your left anterior descending artery, AKA the widow maker. So this is from Dean Ornish's lifestyle heart trial. If you don't know it, you're about to. Okay, can I just say that this got published in the Lancet, okay, like huge internationally respected peer reviewed medical journal, not Green Leafy Magazine, in, I highlighted it, 1990. Why does that matter? Because I went to med school in 1992, and I didn't hear a peep about this study until I went to write my book. And when I wrote my book, I came across this study. So in 2017, like 30 years after it was published, I find this out. You might not know what I found out. Some of you do. Let me tell you, uh, the, let me tell those of you who don't. So this is what Dr. Dean Ornish did. He did a prospective randomized controlled trial to determine whether diet and lifestyle changes could affect coronary atherosclerosis after one year. So he took 28 patients who were um, assigned either to the experimental group with a low fat vegetarian, largely plant-based diet. They're supposed to stop smoking and try some exercise and stress reduction, et cetera. Um, but it largely is centered on this diet versus the uh, 20 to the usual care group. Just show up and do what your doctor says. Before you go, before you go, they didn't do the blood on a Petri dish thing, but something even cooler, quantitative angiography. And this is the LAD. This is blood coming through. And then this is stenosis, like ee, barely getting through. And then the blood finally makes it down and starts feeding the heart muscle itself. Okay. So everybody goes back. It goes away and then they all come back a year later and then we do it again eee, to poof, artery wide open. What? 82% of the experimental group had an average change towards regression. Nobody in the control group who just went on Western medicine stuff as usual had anything but progression. I mean, seriously, we found out in 1990, <laughs> that's so excited that I almost threw my glasses on my face. We found out that like kale and exercise and broccoli and blueberries can reverse the number one killer of you and everyone else on planet earth. And I didn't hear a peep about it ever in medical school. Like, where are you going to hear a peep about it? If you don't hear about it, when you're trying to learn the craft that saves people's lives. Okay, Dr. Carl, maybe it was a one-off, maybe Orange lied. Um, no, he didn't, and here's some proof as to why he didn't. Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, remember this is like in the late 80s and 90s, so they, there wasn't a lot of internet going on back then, and they had no idea that they were both doing basically the exact same thing. Now, Dr. Essie, I call him Essie because his family does, and one day I just jumped into his kitchen, and I pretended to be one of the gang, and it was like an hour before they realized that I was not in Esselstyn. Um, by the way, does anyone know that he was a breast surgeon when he was practicing? Yes, indeed, so close to my heart. Um, speaking of heart, he wrote this book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, in 2007, detailing the astounding results of his 20 year plus nutritional study on 200 cardiac cripples. It was the longest study of its kind ever conducted. And now you're basically able to read angiograms. We go from to artery wide open yet again on the other side of the country. So we've got this picture perfect angiographic proof of what diet can do. And to date, there is only one diet in the history, give me that back, in the history of the world that's been scientifically proven to slow, stop, or even beep, 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 reverse in some cases, the number one killer of you and everyone you love, heart disease. And it's also been proven to prevent or slow or stop or even reverse killers, including stroke, Alzheimer's, obesity, diabetes, and my personal favorite to kill, cancer. So when bacon and bulletproof coffee can do all of that, then keto lovers will have my attention. A little word about processed meat. You might call processed by friendly names such as sausage, hot dog, ham, salami, pepperoni, deli meat, cold cuts, corned beef, beef jerky, and bacon. But the IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, calls them potentially deadly. A group one carcinogen, one of only 121 such classified agents, group one, sharing the honor with things like plutonium, cigarettes, and asbestos. 
sure enough, when the NIH um, did this diet and health study following over 193,000 postmenopausal women for over 9.4 years, they found 25% more breast cancer in red and processed meat consumers. We also know from the IARC, you know, it's a division of the WHO that they're like bought by no one, um, that it increases it being uh, processed meat increases colorectal, gastric, pancreatic, and prostate cancers as well. Here's a question for you. How would you like your steak? Oh, I, I wouldn't like it, thanks. I'll have a tofu burger. But oh, you? Would you like it raw, rare, medium rare, well done, or burnt to a crisp? Mmm, yes. Rare or medium rare? Because if you have steak tartare, you are going to run a very high risk of bloody diarrhea and cramps. And if you have it well done or burnt to a crisp, you are really swallowing down certain mutagens, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, or heterocyclic amines, HCAs to be exact, these cancer-causing compounds that always form on the surface of well done or what you might consider otherwise deliciously grilled, smoked, roasted, barbecued, pan-fried meat. These HCAs form within minutes at high temperatures on a grill. But even baking chicken at a low temperature for 15 or 30 minutes will lead to HCAs on the surface because of a chemical reaction between the heat and the creatinine in the muscle tissue itself. Happy day, fried and grilled veggie burgers, on the other hand, don't have any measurable HCAs. And I actually spent like, I think six hours one day just being super sure that that charred broccoli, because it's like my favorite food on planet earth, is the grilled broccoli, the char doesn't have any carcinogens either from, uh, because yeah, because it's not creatinine, cre creatinine in meat. All right, so how bad is it doc? You're gonna to wanna to avoid this well done meat because it's been linked to breast cancer. For uh, hamburger eaters, a 54% increase, bacon eaters, 64%, beef steak eaters, 121% increase in breast cancer. And women who eat all three of these meats well done have a 362% higher risk than women who choose rare or medium done meat. What? Okay, I'd like to see that how bad the percentage is compared to the woman who chooses a veggie burger. But we don't have that study. Let's listen to my hero, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. Share something that should stop your heart as it did mine. Okay. World War II, the Germans occupied Norway. Among the first things they did was confiscate all the livestock and farm animals to provide supplies for their own troops. So the Norwegians were forced to eat mainly plant-based foods. Now we look at the deaths in Norway, just antecedent to this period, from heart attack and stroke. 1927, 1930, 35. Look at right up here, right at the very top, 1939. Bingo! In come the Germans. Immediately, 1940, wow. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Have we ever seen a population have their cardiovascular disease plummet like this from statins? from bypass surgery or from stents? No, but look what immediately happened with a cessation of hostilities in 1945. Back comes the meat, back comes the dairy, back comes the strokes and heart attacks. I mean, it's such an absolute powerful lesson. Here's my favorite line, you ready? But uh, we didn't get it. Because of it. We didn't get it. And it's been 80 years and we still haven't gotten it. I'd like to thank my friends at Forks Over Knives who gave me permission to In steal World that War from their awesome Netflix documentary. All right. So you got me with the whole Nazi German and that we didn't get it. But chicken's okay, right? Yeah. No. Um, so IGF-1 already told you. PAH is HCA is from cooking. I already told you. And fit. FIP is an HCA. Um, it's found in cooked meats and it possesses a power equivalent to pure estrogen. Remember, estrogen feeds and fuels 80% of all breast cancers. Um, so, both the initiation and the growth of tumors. FIP, interestingly, exists in the breast milk of meat eaters, but not in vegetarians. And within 24 hours of ending meat consumption, 
FIP in urine samples disappears. That's a forgiving body.